You're listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, the show with a light-hearted look at the eventing world, all of the big event previews, reviews, and special guests, and of course, backed up with all of the key Echo Rating stats. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, and it is as Dan would say, one of the shows that we have, it is alphabetty spaghetti, but without Derm. Um, not saying that that makes it even better. We will, of course, miss him greatly, but I'm in charge. It is Nicole, and I have two very special guests to talk through the latest letter, which is the letter K. Firstly, freelance journalist in Austin. Catherine, I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> that sounds a bit ominous, doesn't it? No, no, no. I mean, I always get very overexcited when Derm lets me loose with an alphabetty episode in his absence. Uh, he hates it, listeners, absolutely hates it, but I get a perverse amount of pleasure from it. Um, our second guest is a lady who was extremely well behaved last night because she left the Horse and Hound Awards early so that she could get all her horses ridden and record this podcast with us. Hello, Kitty King. Hi there. I Catherine no, so said, "Oh, good. Kitty, Kitty was so good. She left early. I didn't." <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I need to get back and get the majority of the horses ridden before I spoke to you. So I thought, "Oh, if I stay any later, I won't manage to get up." So we, yeah, we left um, shortly after they did all the awards. But it was a yeah, lovely night, and it was lovely um, seeing yeah, so many fantastic people doing so well. I think it was the night of Piggy French, wasn't it, Catherine? <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, she won most things. Bless her. Um, she's had a brilliant year. Yeah, how's I was going to say? How's she's actually hands? on her honeymoon in the Maldives? So she sent us very nice video recording Aww. saying how thrilled she was. And Trevor Dickens came and got the prize for Vinaya Camira, which was lovely. Amazing. Um, and how's your head? Can I ask if you're feeling feeling bright and breezy like Kitty, or are you a little bit more fragile? I'd say, I'd say fair to middling on my head. Okay. It has been better. Okay. But well, I've several listeners... coffees down now. So Okay, know, so it could well. go the other way, totally. Um, <laughs> listeners, we're recording this at about half past 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, the night <laughs> after the awards. So um, that is, yes, I'm very impressed. Thank you both for joining me. Now, listeners, if you're new to Alphabetti Spaghetti, then sit back and prepare yourselves for what is the least eventing related show that we do. There is always a link to eventing on the eventing podcast, but um, this show is all about things beginning with the letter K that may or may not have linked to eventing. Now, our lovely listeners have been sending their suggestions in and Derm has sent a few suggestions in for us as well. So we're going to start off with, uh, what should we go for? Let's go for, well, knickers. Everybody calls me Knickers, it's my nickname. Uh, but it was more Lucky Knickers. That was sent in by Sarah and it was more Lucky Knickers. Do you have lucky socks? Do you have, I mean, any sort of lucky charm? Kitty? Well, I do have some lucky knickers, but they have been redundant because it's got a little worn, little holy. So <laughs> now I've had to downgrade the lucky socks because they're still going strong. But the, yeah, the lucky knickers, unfortunately, have yeah, died a bit of a sad death because they got worn far too much. <laughs> And were you, were you tempted to buy a new pair of Lucky Knickers or is that not the same? It's not the same when they're new. I don't really okay. like new things. I always have to, at um, big events, I hate wearing kind of new britches or new cross-country colours. I have to have worn them at least kind of once somewhere. I don't know. I've got a weird superstition about new things. I don't like yeah, wearing new things at a competition randomly. So we're on to the, the Lucky Socks now. On for lucky socks, and hopefully they'll still go strong and last another year at least. Fingers do you crossed. wear them at every event, or do you save them? When only you... special ones. Okay, uh, they're saved for when I re really need them most. Need a, a good hoping. good dose of luck. Exactly. So they came out at um, at Bramham and Bergham and the Europeans, and they were out of badminton. They just didn't do such a good job there, but. They kind of got their mojo back for the latter part of the season, so it's all good. They did all right for the back what, end of the year. What day do you wear them on, Kitty? Oh, mm, well, I'll head for the dressage. If the dressage goes shit, then I get a new pair out. But <laughs> if the dressage is good, then they have to last the week. Then, <laughs> 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 but I only wear them for whilst I'm riding and doing that phase. They do come off 
for the rest of the day. I don't wear them all day long. But so they are pretty stinky by the end. But if they're so, lucky, yeah, if you're then... in the lead on Thursday morning and you have to keep wearing them until Sunday night, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if I've done a dire test, then then they yeah get put in the washing bag and I get a new pair. Another pair of are they also known as lucky socks or are they just a, well, do you know what they're just You'd... older socks they're not as lucky and they're not as good but if the lucky ones have failed in the first phase I try my luck with a new pair. Okay, <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> do you wear any? Are you superstitious? Do you like your any lucky no, items? No, not really. I. I used to have a pair of lucky pants that had a silver star on the front that I wore hunting, but I think they they disappeared long ago. But I am a bit funny again about new kit out hunting. I, I very indulgently had a new pair of hunting boots made this summer, and it has taken me until this Monday just gone to actually wear them out hunting. I've been wearing my old ones, wearing my old ones, and then I just thought, no, you've got to suck it up. And it was fine. Was, was it okay? Off. So yes, it was okay. fine. So they're now now in 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 use. They're in use. I was going to say, what did you do? Just sort of sit and look at them and put your old ones back on, or <laughs> and basically, I should have worn them during autumn hunting, and um, I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't. You've got to break them in. They're still, you know, proper old leather hunting boots, and they're quite stiff around the ankles. And I kept thinking, oh, I'll just fall off if I wear them. I don't really know why. So I did wear them exercising a couple of times. And my mother kept ringing me up and asking if I was wearing them around the house. And I was like, no, of course I'm not. <laughs> but you know, now they're on. They're broken in. They're lovely. I'll and probably they're, they're, fall off like they the can, next time yeah. I'm hunting now. But no, 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 no. We're not going to give any of that bad juju around here. <laughs> um, okay, the next K is sent in by Derm himself. And it is for kidnap. If you could take one horse, not your own, from this year, who would it be? Uh, I know, well, Kitty's got a pretty nice yard full of horses anyway, but Kitty, if you could <laughs> add another one to your string, who would it be? Um, I really like having the young horses and having them from the start. So not quite the start because it's going to be seven next season, but I really loved uh, Piggy French's Cooley Lancer. I thought he was okay. a really beautiful looking horse, um, very scopy, um, obviously went incredibly well at Le Leon and I just thought he looked like he had a really bright um, future ahead of him and yeah I love working with the horses and bringing them through the grades so I'm going to go yeah probably a little bit off piece and go for a, a young one rather than your kind of standard kind of five-star winner stealing which, hail sure. bob or chipmunk or yeah. somebody like that I mean That's I mean still the reigning six-year-old world thing. champion so yeah no he, I, he is a lovely horse, I think he's so. a classy horse um, Catherine, I can only imagine that you're stealing a horse to line up for the hunting field. Well, yes, I need something a bit different, Kitty. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love, love, love Sarah Way's Dasset Cooley Dunn, who would be too small Very for cool. me. But, you know, if I was smaller, he would be mega because I think he's so clever and so careful and so full of heart and brain and I loved watching him at Poe and she rides him amazingly and I certainly couldn't ride him like that but he'd get you out of trouble in a really sticky nasty place that hunting I reckon. I don't think he he wouldn't go into the ground either he'd just sort of skip along the top of it. Yeah exactly and he'd jump a gate on him and I certainly wouldn't do that very often but he'd be (laughs) clever I think. Yeah no I think that's a good choice. I think I would actually pick the horse that I have um, lined up for the four-star challenge between myself and Derm that will never happen, <laughs> listeners, uh, in Sam Watson's Tullabeg Flamenco, the horse that he took to the Europeans, the Dunn horse. One, because he's done with a big white blaze and I just love him anyway. Uh, but two, he is just gorgeous, sweet, kind. And as Sam says, you could put your grandma on him. And if he's good enough for grandma, he's good enough for me. So I think I'd go <laughs> very well with Danny as he's known at home. Um Okay, what else have we got on the list? Georgie says, knocked poles, biggest moments from a knockdown. I mean, there's the obvious ones, like Ingrid Klimker at the World Games last year in try on her pole down, cost her the individual gold, gave Ros Ros Cantor the title. Um, Who else have we got? Sam at Badminton. That was yes, Liberty Sam at Badminton. Who won that year when he had the pole down? Was it Chilly Morning? I can't no, remember. it wasn't. It, it was Jock, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it was, I think it was Jock. I want to say it was Jock. the 2013 badminton. Oh, good, 2013. Okay, yeah, a couple of years before. I think it um, was. 
That was a fairly major, fairly major pull down. Was that the last fence again? Yes. Yes. That is it's my, so it just, depressing when the last fence goes. You is it worse, all that Kitty? Work. Is it worse to have the first fence down or the last fence? Oh, I don't know. When I've had the first one down, I'm like, crikey, this is going to be a long way around now to kind of recover and not have any more down. But by the time you've got out of the arena, you're kind of over it a little bit because you've had the whole track to get over the fact you had the first down. But the last, I think that is just gutting when you think you've done a great job, your horse has jumped brilliantly, and then you just touch the last and it comes down and you just think, oh, crikey. Well, you know, Have you lost the three all days of that by day well? That. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> But um, I had the first down at the Leon when Zidante won and I thought I'd lost it because I hadn't realised everyone ahead of me had had fences. So I kind of jumped the last and thought, oh, and was just really kind of deflated and kind of gave her a pat and was cantering out. And then I looked up at the scoreboard and realised that that feeling of relief that the silly pole at the start hadn't actually cost me because she was such a good jumper. I was so disappointed in myself and yeah the relief when I saw the scoreboard it was just yeah huge one I remember really well was the London Olympics and um, the Swedish rider Sarah Algutsen Ostholt who was in the lead uh, in the lead after cross country and in the lead after the first round of show jumping and she had, I can, I can see the fence now. It was an Oxa. I'm not sure it was the last fence. It might have been the second last. Um, she had that down and therefore Michael Young won the gold medal. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. That was um, must have been absolutely gutting for her. I could, yeah, yeah, completely. Because you just think of, oh, Sam won, won London. You forget mm. who actually yeah, lost it. So. Yeah, and she's a lovely grey mare, Vega, Vega, Vega. Um, and I think she was only eight or nine. She wasn't very old at all. And yeah, you know, heartbreaking. Another really, this isn't a knocked pole, but one of the most surprising things I've ever seen in eventing show jumping, my jaw just dropped to the floor, was when Zara Phillip, as she was then, was in the lead. In at the 2007 Europeans in Protoni on the Great Toy Town, and she had a stop in the show jumping, and everyone just went, oh. <laughs> so that was a, again, that, that was a fairly yeah, something big which moment. I'd completely <laughs> forgotten about. But it seems so long ago now. It's, the extraordinary thing about eventing is they're all still competing, pretty much. <laughs> you know, all those horses <laughs> they are still the ones uh, coming through bad. with new horses, and yeah. The the drama of final fences, refusals, those kinds of things never fail to get the heart rate going. And actually, we had a, a major one at Babington this year with Ballamore Class having a pole down, but then being over the time in the show jumping, which handed the win to Piggy French and Vinay Kamura instead of Oliver Townend. Um, okay, another one for you. Now, Derm is going to be especially gutted that I have got this stat for an alphabetty spaghetti episode that he is not on. He said I could use it, providing I referred to her as Queen Ingrid. Of course, <laughs> we will call her Queen Ingrid Klimka, so she fits with the K. Um, but essentially, and this is pretty good, not going to lie, she's the only rider in the world to have competed at every Europeans, World Equestrian Games and Olympics this decade. That is just... Yeah, it's, it's just phenomenal. It's just... Yeah, you can't believe the consistency to manage that. It, it's so difficult to get to one, let alone all of them. It, it's it's mental, really. And to do it on very few horses, you know, she doesn't have a huge team of event horses, does she? So no. that makes it even more impressive. I mean, Hale Bob has been exceptionally strong for her in recent championships, but before that, you'd be looking at sort of Butts of Braxis and, and horses like that, that she has just been so consistent with. And on top of that, so not only has she been to every championship, but she's also been on the team for Germany at every championship and never as an individual rider in the last decade. So that I even that even... must have a lot of medals in it. Yes, it <laughs> must have. I wonder if they are kept in her downstairs, Lou. Where would where 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 do you keep your medals, Kitty? Quite a lot of them are just in a box. Um, <gasps> a box, a box. Um, 
which has got a load of photos and things like that in which I actually need to do something about and get framed. But the medals I won at ponies and juniors and young riders, they are all framed in one big picture. So there's a picture of the pony Europeans with its medal below, one from the junior with its medal below, and then the two young riders with their medals below. So we've got kind of four pictures and four medals in one really big um, frame. So that's, that's really nice. It's what I want to do with my other ones. I just haven't done it. I've got uh, my first Leon, my yeah, first two Leon wins um, framed. Um, and then I yeah, need to sort out the rest of them. You've you got it. That can be your winter project, Kitty. We're going to yeah, have you on the exactly. podcast in the spring. My husband's been going on at me for ages about sorting it out. <laughs> moaning, you still haven't got any pictures from the Olympics of frame and you still haven't done this and you still haven't got the medals frame. I'm like, I know, I know, but I know <laughs> where they are and they're all safe. So I'll do it, do it one day. I'll get myself organised. Um, well, we will move away from a potential king domestic. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, we'll let him uh, keep keep the pressure on and we'll come back and check in <laughs> on them. Um, the next one is in the letter K is actually sent in by Derm. Um, and I'll be honest and say this, this is one that kind of passes me by because I am not a box set watcher, but he has says K, K, I mean, this is how tenuous listeners he thinks of things. K is for kingdoms which made Derm think of Game of Thrones. Uh, What box set (laughs) would you both recommend? Now, I don't watch box sets. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Um, So enlighten me. Kitty, have you seen it? What would you recommend? It's terrible. I'm in your camp. I've never seen Game of Thrones. And I've never really watched a box set, which is really a little little bit embarrassing to admit. But um, no, I've never, never kind of been a box set. Uh, watcher so I've miss, missed out on that so it'd be um, yeah, good to hear what everyone else watches because then I might actually have to go and buy myself a box set there you go listeners you can recommend your box set suggestions to Kitty King maybe she'll listen to, to one over Christmas if she's got a bit of time while sorting her medals send them in uh, comment on the, the posts on social media send them in on the flick group whatever you prefer to do um, Catherine can you save the group from uh, from embarrassment well, I'm- <laughs> I'm not great at watching telly, I have to admit, um, but I totally and utterly love Peaky Blinders. And I've probably watched the whole thing twice now. And it's got nothing to do with the storyline, which is all pretty um, extraordinary and, you know, unbelievable. But I love the way it looks. It's really stylish. The clothes are amazing. Obviously, <laughs> um, Tommy Shelby's hugely fit, but it just <laughs> looks cool. <laughs> So, and I'm that shallow that it just looks cool. So, <laughs> I do love Peaky Blinders. Okay, there you go, Kitty. You can check it out. Um, I, I might have a look just for um, the same reasons as Catherine, basically. <laughs> um, okay, what is next? I've got one from Deborah. Oh, I like this one. Kit Kats. You know, a chocolate Kit Kat. Um, Listeners, if you, I think Kit Kats are sold around the world, but they are like a chocolate wafer biscuit, a wafer biscuit covered in chocolate. Um, I'm personally a big Kit Kat fan. They do limited edition flavors. Uh, Favorite limited edition flavor, therefore, the likes of peanut butter, caramel, that kind of thing. But can I go for something very slightly different, which is that massive, exciting surprise when you occasionally get one of the old-fashioned two-fingered Kit Kats and it's solid chocolate. Oh, yes. Oh, that, that's good the one. best. <laughs> you always know you're on for a good day if that happens. <laughs> yeah, that's like a really lucky thing to happen in your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, if you ate a Kit Kat on the morning of Badminton Cross Country, Kitty, and it was solid chocolate, you'd take your lucky socks I'd off be and quite, think, I'd, I'm all right. The lucky lucky socks would be redundant. They could stay clean for another day. Yeah, Um, exactly. Yeah, I'd be fine if I had the uh, the whole chocolate strip of a Kit Kat. That would be yeah, it would be pretty good. But favorite luck would definitely be in favorite flavor of Kit Kat. What would you, you Catherine? I'm not overly fussy. I like all of them. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Plain. I I I must admit that one. Yes, I like the peanut one, but I have to say I like eating a normal Kit Kat, quite traditional. But if I eat the peanut butter Kit Kat chunky, I have to eat it like by eating all the chocolate off the edge and then eating the top <laughs> and then eating the middle. It's terribly gross, but it, you know. I do that with all Kit Kats and all chocolate do you? actually, in fact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's quite the commitment. It's not very attractive, no, I... but it's quite satisfying. <laughs> um, 
Okay, next on the list, let's have a look. And I'm, I'll be honest and say this is an absolute corker of a suggestion. Nothing to do with eventing, but anybody that came up with this, and I think it's Sarah again, uh, kale. Do we like kale, the vegetable, kind of green, cabbagey affair? Funnily enough, funnily enough, I cooked it for supper for pretty much the first time the other day. Funny you should say that. And I sort of slightly pan fried it very, very quickly. Ooh. And it was really nice. Surprisingly Okay. Nice. I cooked it once so, and I don't think I cooked it for long enough. It was literally like chewing on a bit of tree. You have to get rid of the stalks. You have to cut yeah, maybe the I didn't. leaves off the stalks. Yeah, that's probably my mistake. Kitty, fan of kale? I, I have to admit I haven't actually ever cooked kale, but my dad's kale that he does is actually very good. He's, um, he's a great cook and okay. when he does his Sunday roast and has some kale, it's, it, it's very tasty. Okay, there so we I go. I think if my uh, life listeners. was more kale and less Kit Kats, it would be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think it probably says more about me that I eat more Kit Kats than kale. Um, but yes, you're probably right. Um, okay, we'll, we'll start to wrap this up soon, but one from Bonnie. Uh, Kit, so Kitty, this is probably a good one for you. So the clothing that a team gets for championships, whether it be an Olympics, Pan American Games, Europeans, World Championships, um, and then which country is the best looking? Now, I'm presuming which country has the best kit as opposed to which country is, you know, physically the, the best, best looking. looking riders. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it must be quite, it must be quite an exciting part of the process. Well, going to the kitting out day before Rio, that was, that was so exciting. It was such a great day and I didn't really know what it involved. And it was literally like going in a massive shopping warehouse and you went from kind of one zone to another. So you went to your first zone, which had your kind of smart wear that you would wear. Um, like when we had the, you had like an evening dinner at the team house and um, various ceremonies, you had to wear your kind of your smart kit. Then you had your casual village kit, which is what you wore around the Olympic village. You had your, um, your more bespoke kind of, riding kits your cross country colours and things like that. So you had all these little zones and your trainers and your different shoes and it was yeah, it was a took all day going shopping for your um for your Olympic kit. It was a great experience and um, I bet that was yeah, so very much fun. Yeah, and really lucky. Presumably you get to keep it. it. Yes, it's all in big old um Team GBR kind of sport bags which are bright red that say Great Britain all over. They were really good bags, but then I'm too embarrassed to use them in public now. Oh, <laughs> so God, Kitty, no, get them out. I would. They're all in the <laughs> attic with the kit in it still because there was so much kit. It's still kind of – some of the stuff never even got worn and it's still in its kind of plastic bags all folded up neatly in, in one of the one of the kit bags. So it's I mean, yeah, in the attic at the moment. <laughs> Kitty, you need to go to the supermarket on a Sunday morning – you get out oh, one of those t-shirts, <laughs> off you go, put your kit bag over your shoulder, off you go to Sainsbury's. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd, yeah, don't don't not wear it. Take any excuse. Uh, I wear it's one of the, some of the t-shirts to Pilates and the, racks, the rucksack I use quite a bit because that's really useful. But the rest of it is, um, yeah, up in the, up in the loft. <laughs> oh, no, that's the second job for winter, Kitty. Oh, get my kiss out. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, you are going to regret coming on this episode because we are lining up the jobs for you to do. But that's, yeah. You're going to keep I, me busy now all winter. <laughs> exactly. Forget having a break. But we'll find you a good box set to watch along the way. Perfect. I can watch my box set with all my kit in front of me while I sort it out and my pictures that I need to get in frames. So Exactly. Keep me, keep me busy. <laughs> exactly. It's one of the extraordinary things about Olympics, though, isn't it? It's like the, what the other countries wear, you know, the trot up and things like that. Because there's quite a lot of national dress going on. And then there's sort of, you know, <clears throat> I don't know, a random tracksuit. Every nation, every person from a certain country sort of is wearing a shell suit or something. And so you look at it and you think, oh, I think <laughs> I'd probably quite like to be a British rider. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our, I quite liked our trot up kit for Rio. It was kind of different to what we're used to as event riders because it wasn't super smart but you had um, pretty bright trainers and then quite smart navy kind of chino-y shorts and then a, a white t-shirt with a union jack and 
another kind of emblem on it, which I can't remember what it was now, with the red belt. And it, it, although it wasn't kind of super smart, like suits and things like that, which we'd normally wear, in that weather, I thought it looked pretty, yeah, pretty good. Pretty smart. And, yeah, practical. quite practical and kind of sporty, and it was good for the weather as well. So I didn't think we'd look too awful. The French always look super smart, and they normally have tailored tailored suits and the ladies have kind of little jackets and skirts and yeah they always look really smart the French and the Italians so yeah it's it's always interesting. I I love watching any kind of trot up any kind of horse inspection at any event whether it be a championship whether it be a three-day it's just always one of my favorite things to do because from a fashion perspective I just find it really interesting Um, and some people can can trot up in things that I definitely can't even you know stay upright in. Um, (laughs) I, I do. I think I'm with Catherine. Occasionally you get some sort of really traditional sort of countries dress. I think Norway and where else is it that do have the, the really sort of fancy frocks, the traditional dresses that they, they would have? Ha- they had some at um, the Europeans this year. Like yes. I think was it Switzerland maybe? Yeah, oh, it could I think be. the Swiss and the Austrians wear those. Kind yeah, of the, yeah, more- yeah, that's it. <laughs> I just, um, I think it's brilliant i love i love to see all the different cultures coming through um yeah i'm relieved we don't have to wear that (laughs) well i I, i'm never gonna have to wear it ever so i can look at it and and kind of go oh that's nice but no it's it's traditional to their country isn't it which is nice to keep it coming through um what are the k's what are the k's have we got got that we can go on then i just want to say christina cook with a k for christina because yes. she is not only a completely brilliant rider, but yep. also a very good role model for anyone in eventing and a um, bit of a bit of a heroine, I think, really. Yeah, agree. Amazing, amazing competitor. And you've ridden on teams with her as well, haven't you, Kitty? I imagine she's a good person to have in your corner. Oh, she, she's great. And um, she was so helpful to me out in, in Rio when I kind of wanted to walk the course kind of on my own and not with the with a big group um, and obviously Tina by then being told she was, you know, not competing. She was, you know, the reserve. Um, she kind of spent a lot of time with me walking the course and giving me some great advice and, you know, stuff that other riders might've been a little bit kind of missed that they weren't able to compete and be a little bit kind of sulky, whereas she was just so helpful and couldn't have given me more of her time and, and knowledge and you know I really really appreciated being on the on the squad and being on teams with her because she's yeah she's so helpful I think I'm right in saying this um somebody will correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think Tina Cook has ever won a five star and I feel no, like hasn't. it just she needs to win a five star she's been European she champion she's won medals for so many years has been a stalwart of the team for so many years she needs she needs a five-star win and it surely there'll be one at some point well billy the red could win her a five-star could be could be badminton this year she's going to be going out all guns blazing after all and i'd love her to win a five-star she'd be extremely deserving of that agree no i completely agree um i think also one of the reasons maybe that she hasn't won one yet is because she is such a team competitor. So she, you know, quite often she doesn't have a massive string. So she would be going to the championships rather than your Burleys and Pones. So then she only kind of gets one, one shot a year at her, her Her five star. star. And sometimes, you know, she would save her horse, you know, like minus frolic and that he didn't always run at badminton. She'd save him for, you know, that championship that, that year. So, you know, I think she has um, probably given up possibly chances of of winning five stars to um, you know to help the Brits on a on a championship team. Yeah, yeah, no, you're you're probably very much right on that one. Um, I would hope that there is still there is still a five star win there, and Billy the Red could well do it. He is going to come out, I imagine, it in twenty twenty, and will be looking for a. He's got his Olympic qualification, but that blip at the Europeans means that he should still want to really sort of say to the selectors, "Come on, pick me, pick me." Um, Okay, Kitty Catherine, it has been an absolute pleasure in taking Alphabetti Spaghetti away from Derm. I think I might do it more often. We've got plenty of letters left. Um, I might just go rogue. 
go rogue we'll get you we'll get you back again but thank you both so much and we will get you both back on again Catherine we have got some very exciting hall of fame I don't know if I'm allowed yeah. to say it yet hall of fame episodes coming listeners there you go um I've said it now it's out there uh, and keep your eyes peeled for that probably either back end of this year early 2020 um and there are some really exciting ones lined up and I think you've been working on some articles for them as well I have and they're good. I hopefully it should be a, a good addition to the to the podcast roster I think but I'm looking fun. forward to it um and Kitty go and uh, sort your boxes out um <laughs> And we my will my box sets out. <laughs> exactly. We'll let you know any listener recommendations that come in for you. Um, but thank you very much. And we will get you back on again. Dern was actually gutted that not only was I doing an alphabetty spaghetti episode without him, but I had Kitty on without him as well. So <laughs> we'll get you back on again in the new year. No, thank you very much. Thanks, Nicole. It's been a pleasure. Listeners, we hope you've enjoyed this latest episode of Alphabetti Spaghetti. The next episode will be coming soon for you. So send your suggestions in. I think we're on to the letter, the letter L. L comes next in the alphabet, doesn't it? So there you go. Um, send your suggestions in. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to comment and share, like on Facebook, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We've got loads coming up for you still over the next few weeks before we finish out 2019. But thank you for listening to another episode of the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. This podcast is available for free on iTunes, Spotify, Podcast Addict, or wherever you usually listen to your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. Find us at eventingpodcast.com or search Eventing Podcast on social media.